Frank Morris and John and Clarence Anglin, convicts and bank robbers, fled from Alcatraz, a federal island prison off the coast of San Francisco in 1962. One of the biggest mysteries in American history, with four criminals masterminding one of the greatest prison escapes ever. Keep watching, because you're in for a mighty shock. Let's talk a little more about Alcatraz. Considered escape-proof, and the most secure prison in the entire United States. It was built on an island approximately two kilometers off the coast of San Francisco, California, and its name comes from an Arabic phrase that means the rock. The main jail was created as a military prison from 1910 to 1912, but it was taken over by the Federal Bureau of Prisons. By 1938, the Bureau had significantly strengthened security, and Alcatraz Prison had become the destination for America's toughest criminals. Those who had committed the most severe crimes, as well as those who had caused difficulties or attempted to escape from other federal prisons were among them. Al Capone, Machine Gun Kelly, Creepy Corpus, and others are among the famous Alcatraz inmates. Because of the two levels of security it had in its initial year, the jail was regarded to be inescapable. The so-called Devil Island Jail had 242 convicts and 155 guards, the lowest prisoner-to-guard ratio in the United States at the time. As a result, any attempt to flee in a hostile way would be unsuccessful, as it has been in previous times. Regardless of whether you think escaping from prison is bravery or stupidity, let's talk about the masterminds who made it all happen. First up is Alan West, the oldest inmate at the federal prison of Alcatraz. He's been arrested more than 20 times throughout his life, he is, at the very least, consistent. Next up comes Frank Morris, who was widely regarded as the group's smartest member, and was likely the brains behind the entire escape operation. Not only was he the smartest in the group, Morris also had an IQ of 133, which put him in the top 2% of all Americans at the time. Morris had already escaped from the Louisiana State Penitentiary, only to get arrested a year later committing a burglary. He was then sent to Alcatraz in January of 1960 to prevent him from making any other great escapes. However, he was probably the most important character in this ingenious plan. Finally, we have the Anglin brothers, John William Anglin and Clarence Anglin. The brothers from Georgia were born into a family of 13 children and were believed to be inseparable as children. Even when John was moved to Alcatraz in 1960 for attempting to flee the Atlanta jail, they remained close, since Clarence was sent to Alcatraz in 1961. The four convicts involved in the big escape knew each other from previous incarcerations in Florida and Georgia. They opted to apply for nearby rooms in Block B of the building, since the conditions of the institution were progressively worsening, and they had a previous successful escape among their ranks. The heat-treated steel doors of cells and other prison doors would be the first obstacles they had to overcome in the jail. The doors were toolproof and difficult to cut through with anything the inmates possessed, and obtaining the keys to open all of the doors they needed to pass through seemed nearly impossible. This is where their Block B cells came in handy, because if you can't get through the door, then make another door in the wall. With the aid of leftover saw blades, metal spoons, and a rudimentary electric drill built from a vacuum cleaner motor, that's exactly what these four men achieved. They were able to gradually extend the ventilation ducts in their cells by drilling holes in them, as the ventilation ducts connected to a hallway, which led to an unoccupied upper floor. They conducted their drilling during music hour to disguise the noise, and they also used painted cardboards to cover up the defiled wall. It was mostly unguarded beyond the corridors. Their plan had just gotten a lot easier. They didn't have to go through any gates or steal the guards for keys. As a result, their labor at the unoccupied top level consisted solely of constructing a raft, life preservers, and paddles that they would employ to cross Alcatraz's most famous obstacle, the water. They made the life preservers and a 6 by 14 foot raft using a design from a popular mechanics magazine and well over 50 raincoats they managed to collect. The raincoats were sewn together and sealed with steam pipes. They must be wondering, how did no one notice when they were away from their cells? Well, they cleverly disguised their absence by meticulously building fake heads out of concrete, dust, toothpaste, soap, and toilet paper. 
by gluing hair to their dummies' heads, they created this unique piece of art. They could readily obtain hair from the barber shop floor, since Clarence Anglin worked as a barber. The inmates planned their jailbreak on June 11, 1962, six months after they began their operation by securing nearby cells. They put their dummies in position when the lights were down, removed the cardboard masking the open ventilation shaft, and headed for the roof. However, not everything went to plan, as the crew lost their oldest member, Alan West. This is because West had used concrete to secure his cardboard camouflage over the ventilation shaft, and the concrete had hardened by the time it was time to move. He managed to open it, but by the time he arrived at the meeting location, Morris and the Anglins had already left without him. Alan West did what any sane guy would do, and went back to sleep in his cell. Morris and the Anglins had slid 15 feet down a kitchen pipe from the top of the roof. After that, they climbed the 12-foot barbed wire fence before getting to the beach. They used a modified concertina to inflate their raft in a blind spot away from the guard towers and searchlights. They finished and put the raft on the water at 10 p.m., according to estimates. They had beaten the supposedly impenetrable jail. They had defied all odds, including the gods and security systems. But could they beat the California waters? The nature of their aquatic trip, however, is not universally agreed upon. There are two theories of what occurred that night. One is that they didn't make it because of the tides, the cold, and the lack of records of a stolen car, which would have been essential if they made it to shore. The second assumption is that they made it through the voyage unscathed. Their bodies have not been located as of today, which is rare. Darwin Kuhn, a former Alcatraz convict, had this to say. The reason I think they made it, why they got away, was because everybody else that tried to get off this island was accounted for. Those three guys are still unaccounted for today, so that makes me think they got away. He's entirely correct. It's strange that none of the fugitives' bodies were ever found, especially because two out of every three drowning victims are retrieved, according to specialists. Furthermore, the Anglin brothers' family members claim that they received unsigned postcards over the years, and that their mother received flowers every year on Mother's Day until she died. Of course, this may be from complete strangers. However, at their mother's funeral, people testified to the presence of two tall women strangely being present. Two odd, bearded males were also observed at their father's burial, weeping over the casket before going away. Several further sightings of the Anglin brothers, or Frank Morris, have been claimed in Florida, and even in Brazil. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think Morris and the Anglin brothers escaped the escape-proof island? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.